Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and no more club day today. I'm kidding man, it's always time for the club. Now ladies and gentlemen, I gotta give a big thank you for watching my video yesterday, where I talked about the good old fun part of Macintoshes and getting your own setup and whatnot. Now ladies and gentlemen, I love making that kind of stuff, and it, it gives me a little bit of, yeah, it gives, it gives me chances to be myself really, and, and as long as you all enjoy it, I'll keep making it, and, and thank you all for giving it a chance. Now a couple nights ago, I was actually just doing my work, playing some video games, you know, having a good old time. And as I was watching my YouTube videos without ad block, I noticed that I got one consistent ad on my Mac, which was clean my Mac. Now, usually when I come across software like this, I tend to, you know, sort of brush it away, but I feel like this video needs to be made because I know a lot of people end up falling for this stuff and it's better that I kind of cover it and have a good laugh about it and talk about it because this software isn't necessarily malicious. It's not like we're talking about malware, like, hey guys, this is a botnet that's taken over. No, 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 we're talking about software that I personally feel does a little bit more harm than it does good and honestly, the people that are using it just don't know any better than they should. So let's get this started real quick quick. Now, clean my Mac, if you just type in their uh, name on uh, YouTube, you'll come across like, ah, fix MacBook issues, best Mac virus cleaners, clean my Mac full. And there's like a bunch of people who review it like speed up any Apple computer or the best Mac cleaning tool it might actually be how to clean your Mac 2019. Clean my Mac review and tutorial. Hey guys, let's, let's, let's figure out how to press next a bunch of times, man. Now this might sound like, hey, it's a great idea. My Macs are running slow. Now this argument also doesn't, isn't a Mac exclusive. This is an argument that works across every PC. There's a lot of people who Google this kind of stuff for the, for Windows and Mac. And it's time for me to just get down to the nitty gritties of it. Now the actual website for Clean My Mac is MacPaw, the company that comes up with a lot of this stuff. Amazing apps to improve your day, like Clean My Mac, Clean My PC, Clean My Drive, Set App, Wallpaper Wizard. Uh, I actually wonder, it is wallpaper? Oh, oh heck yeah, dude. Get me new wallpapers? That's actually not a bad deal. Now their premier software is Clean My Mac X, your Mac as good as new. Clean My Mac is a wall-in-one package to awesomeize your Mac and clean megatons of junks and make your computer run faster just like it did on day one. Now they bring up a lot of these like, hey, VentureBeat, Mac Stories, I'm more Cult of Mac. And they bring up a lot of these like big publications that apparently, you know, you know, show this application off when really a lot of those publications, like they talk about, hey, we're just releasing the application, or hey, they were just releasing an application. Kind of seems a little heavy handed to, to you know, hey, the, we we're featured everywhere when they literally made a news report that said they released a software. I mean, you know, kind of, I mean, it's like Capcom saying, ooh, RE3, look at, it's on, I, it's on all these publications. I mean, they talked about the game being released and reviewed it. I mean, it's, Come on now. <laughs> now, there's always another thing where like, I always like to see websites comparing themselves. Like you remember the Mac Keeper stuff that we looked at, that really like weird software that I'm sure had like, not, that I'm sure wasn't exactly the Gucciest. I think I gave it a bad review, but here they talk about versus Mac Keeper. They're often regarded as similar apps, but there's a world of difference between the two. Let's match them. Now, throughout this, they keep giving themselves the check mark, the check mark, and then they remove, 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 like, hey, we don't have antivirus protection. And so at least they're honest. And then they keep mentioning notarized by Apple, right? Like, and it keeps going down. Like here's CC Cleaner, right? Which is another well-known application. They go down and say notarized by Apple. This is like pretty repetitive as far as many things are concerned. And this is where I want to burst the bubble. Notarization by Apple is an automated process right here. The Apple notary service is an automated system that scans your software for malicious content, checks for code signing issues, and returns the results to you quickly. You literally submit it to Apple's basically like virus check, it tells you, hey, you're good. Sends it back to you with like a clean bill of health. You attach that to your package and it gives you notarization. Don't get me wrong, this is good. But I feel like, again, it's one of those things that when you look at their website, a little bit oversold and I wish they were more through with like how, it, it almost feels like they're passing on the issue that Apple engineers specifically sat down and were like, ah, oh, well, uh, did we, uh, did, let's look through this specific package. I mean, to me, it feels like that's the case when you advertise it that way, but I'm sure that's just me and maybe not the average person out there. Notarization of Apple products basically means that downloading applications like, for instance, Open Emu, which is something that I use to emulate games while things are rendering or I'm doing things on the Mac VM, and then you've got things like CC Cleaner. 
Now, I'm gonna show you real quick what notarization effectively means, right? So let's say that I open up a CC Max setup, right? And I fire it up real quick, it verifies, attaches volumes. At some point, CC Cleaner, once I copy it to the applications, and then I try running it, for instance, right here, it'll actually tell me, hey, this is an application downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? So it's not notarized, which means Apple's gonna tell me, hey, we didn't check the app. It's all on you, brother. Now, checking CC Cleaner, even though that it wasn't notarized by Apple, just checking the Unix executable, it actually doesn't have anything wrong detected within it. This is fine and this is okay. This was scanned 28 days ago and I don't think much has ever changed. So even though that a actual application isn't notarized by Apple, isn't, isn't a blanket statement. It just means that by Apple standards, it doesn't have any malware and that's a good thing. But it shouldn't be designed as a system to scare you away from any third party application. Just run them through virus total hybrid analysis and just see for yourself what the application is capable of doing and what it isn't. Just because a program doesn't necessarily trigger a virus flag doesn't mean that it, I think it's completely unsafe either or safe one way or the other. Um, if you really want to get into it, it's all about what a program does and what it doesn't do, what permissions it has and how those permissions can or cannot be abused. It's, it's a lot to take in, but just off the top of my bat, this notarization thing, I kind of had to nip down a little bit because it was being, in my opinion, just a tad oversold. So now that I've got this application installed, I just want to run clean my Mac X and sort of show you what I'm dealing with. Now, this system I've been using for about two months now, right? And clean my Mac is an app downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? Apple checked it for malicious software and none was detected. So that's a message you're gonna read from a notarization, right? So now over here, you can see on my Mac, I've actually got about 22 gigs available out of 214, meaning that I've actually used this Macintosh a fair bit. I've got about 138 gigabytes of storage. Now I've been doing my editing and work on this Mac virtual machine. So I'll be able to sort of see how much it can really clean. This is after two months of using my Mac. And again, I want to stress for disclaimers, this is a virtual machine and not an official Mac. So just, you know, have that as a disclaimer too. Please read our privacy policy. That's cool. Share my usage statistics uh, and agree to privacy policy. So again, you're going to have to agree to whatever it has. And okay, let me just turn down the audio real quick so I don't get this crazy stuff. Now here they've said free up space, boost speed. Well, let's just get to the actual application. All right, there we go. Start with a nice and thorough scan of the Mac. All right, let me show you what this stuff. So you go over here, it scans for everything, and it'll let me know just how much useless junk I have on my computer. Oh, here we go, 4.73 gigs of, of, of uh, unneeded junk. All right, and then protection is okay, and my speed, three tasks to run. So I guess we'll look at what they want me to delete. Now here they've got user cache files, language files, system log files, user log files, junk, system cache files, broken login items. Now for some of the stuff they've got extra stuff. So for instance, right here for Xcode, which is the Apple uh, development kit for iOS and whatnot, I am showing uh, some junk right here, nothing too massive. System cache files, user cache files, junk files, system logs, and language files. Now in this case, I'll say the language and the log files usually can be cleared up. But the issue that I have with this is things like user cache files. So let's look at what they want me to get rid of. Firefox app, what's in my Google directory, Safari, Discord, Epic Games Launcher, because I did play some Fortnite on this, Spotify, Home, Homebrew, Epic Games, Apple, basically they want me to look through, for instance, right here, I've got my uh, After Effects, Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, Help Viewer, for whatever reason. All these applications have their specific caches, and Apple, and or at least the software thinks it's ideal to get rid of them. This is where I'm gonna outright tell you that this is something that I can't really get behind. The, thing, the reason these cache files necessarily exist is so that a cache can be created and anytime a repetitive action needs to be done on a computer, usually these cache files can be you know, called up into. That doesn't mean it all the time. If a cache file is too old, it probably won't be dealt with. Think about it like this. How many times have you done something on your computer that you do every single day? Right, Dealing with cache files like this, when you're doing the same program every single day or something, 
This is designed usually to help that thing smooth through as quick as it can because if it needs to pull up repetitive data day by day, it's better that it knows what it is beforehand, pulls it up, and gets things done smoothly. Now, of course, the older a cache can get, you know, the, the more useless it becomes. And sure, at that point, getting rid of it is a viable necessity. But in this case, it's, it's often one of those cleanup applications that I think don't really actually speed up your computer. In fact, if anything, they probably slow down your computer slightly. It's kind of like, let's say that you're on your iPhone or your Android phone, right? And you go open up your multitasking view and you're like, wah, 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 get rid of all those applications. Don't do that. Okay, because honestly, you're killing an application. The only time you should ever do that is if an application isn't working properly, so you wipe it, restart it, and then it starts anew. The moment you start doing that, the moment you force the actual operating system to say, wow, this person wanted to use Twitter again, better completely restart Twitter from scratch versus, hey, this is what Twitter looked like an hour ago, let's just take it from suspension and put it back to the forefront. And I would say for a lot of this, this is, this is the case over here. Why get rid of a lot of these cache files? Again, I know some of these may be old, but let's say you're going to the same websites again in Firefox over and over and over again, which a lot of people do. Well, congratulations, you're still getting rid of a cache that would have otherwise sped up your actual internet browsing versus now slowing it down and forcing you to recache something that you probably don't need to do. Now, speed-wise, they say run maintenance scripts, flush DNS cache, oh, free up RAM. Now, here's something about freeing up RAM that I want to kind of raise the conception of, okay? Let's say that you have like 16 gigs of RAM. Your computer is not going to go slow if you're using 14 out of 16 gigabytes of RAM. Operating systems are intelligent enough to take things in, in and out of your RAM all the time, putting them into swap, deloading them, whatever you want to call it, unloading them, or whatever you want to get down to. Simply having free RAM isn't good. The saying is, if it's unused RAM, it's wasted RAM, so don't worry about it. This is just simply one of those things where I feel like it, it, it really just like targets the individuals that don't really know what this stuff is designed there for. It's not going to make your computer magically faster. In some cases, I'd say it makes it slower. Now, moving on from all of that, what this application also provides you with, there's a bunch of other tools like, hey, here's a shredder. So if you want to securely wipe files that they can't be restored, here's a shred tool, which basically utilizes Apple's secure erase and, and just does it within the application. So for sure, there's definitely a lot of applications within here that they're going to, that, that, that I think are fine from like a ease of use standpoint, but they're nothing that I would pay big money for in any case. Now they've got things like, hey, here's turning off login items or working around your login agents. And this is kind of fine because in reality, it's this stuff that actually slows your computer down. Let's say you download a bunch of applications and it's all vying for startup, right? So you're starting up your computer, it's slow, probably because when you installed Windows or Mac or whatever, it didn't have a lot to do with startup. Congratulations, when you install like 10, 20 startup applications, it makes your startup last longer than usual. Beyond that, once you actually have a bunch of applications running in the background or all vying for space in your system, chances are you're probably gonna bloat your system up and it's gonna run slower as time goes on. If you get rid of that and you contain how many startup applications run or how many things are running in the background, that's gonna speed your computer up more than removing cache files or unwanted files, in my opinion. It's like people have this misconception that I have a terabyte space, oh my God, I only have a gigabyte free. Guess my computer's gonna be completely slow. Yeah, to an extent I'd say, but it's not the core reason for it. That's not it at all. Chances are you probably have a lot of bloat that you installed over time and chances are your hardware is aging as it is. So the more software updates you install, the more, the more uh, you know, heavier your operating system becomes, the slower you end up getting over time. It's just the natural cause for systems that you own. Now, this is something that I really wanted to make this video on primarily because I look at these licenses for tools like this. Like here's a one year subscription to Clean My Mac X license, which here it is, $57. Here's a license for two Macs for $85, $128. So it just keeps increasing. And then they have like one-time purchases, like here's $114, here's $171, here's $257. Like that's a lot of money to be given out. And then you have these deal of the days, which I'm gonna be real with you, I think they're always on sale all the time. This is one of those tools that I swear to God I see on sale all the time. Um, and then you just keep on going down and it, it, I honestly, I personally feel that this is not a worthwhile investment for this amount of money to be putting into cleaning cache files. 
I, I just don't understand. I just don't get it. Now, Clean My Mac X was just one of those examples that I could have used, but I argue that this pretty much bleeds into almost every cleanup application that exists out there. I think the demographic that these programs end up targeting are those that don't know that you can do this for yourself and not only do it for yourself, but do it better. Programs like this, I feel, personally are more harmful than they may be helpful in the long term. And for people who think that their computers magically get faster because they scanned for cache files and cleaned four gigs off their computer, suddenly making it magic and faster over time, or hey, it's just like brand new, I think is a little disingenuous, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, in modern day computing, both Windows, Mac, and Linux nowadays come with a lot of automated tools and built-in tools and background services that do all of this as time goes on. To be the smart person and intercept what these operating systems are doing in the background for you anyways, does more harm than I think it does good. And I feel like a video like this needs to go out there because honestly, I, I don't wanna see people specifically downloading these tools because they think that there's this grandiose fix of their computer going on, floating around on the internet. Just follow my advice. Be careful with what you download on the internet. Don't download shady stuff. Don't install a bunch of bloat on your computer. And if you do have a bunch of bloat on your computer, do some spring cleaning, because I guarantee you that's gonna speed up your Mac or PC more than any of these tools ever will. So ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.